Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore back once again to help you with your electronics. Today we're going to talk about digital multimeters. Very useful device. You want to measure DC volts, DC current, AC volts or current, resistance, might have other scales on it as well, but really, really useful device. The thing you need to know about this little beastie is just how accurate is it? What kind of precision does it have? What sort of resolution do we have? This might vary from range to range. That particular device is 0.8% accurate of reading on DC volts, but on other scales, it can be as high as 2.5%, right? So that's, that's an error uh, window, right? You think of the reading plus or minus 1%, plus or minus 2%, whatever it is. And then there's a second part to this, and this is the part that usually confuses people. So it'll say maybe plus or minus 1%, of the reading, now literally what the thing is printing out for you, and then it'll say maybe plus or minus three counts. It's the counts part that kind of throws people. What does that actually mean? Right? All right. So, you know, if we were talking about just the reading itself, this was a very simple thing. We just ignore the counts part. Let's say you measure one volt and it's 1%. So 1% of the, of the 1 volt is 10 millivolts. In other words, the accuracy window that you're looking at is a volt plus or minus 10 millivolts, meaning the value that you're measuring as a volt could be as low as 990, 990 millivolts, could be as high as 1.01 volts. There's, there's a little unknown uh, window, if you will. You don't know exactly what it is. This is true of all measurement devices. All measurement devices have this, this accuracy question, and you want to get that as small as possible if you can. Okay? So what's the counts part of it? Because this goes a little bit further. You know, it would be nice if it was just 1% of reading and that was the end of it. But you will often see on digital meters this extra thing, this counts business. Right? So what's a count? Well, when we look at a meter itself, it has a finite number of digits. So that meter I was just looking at is typical, and it would be classified as a three and a half digit meter. Three and a half. What the heck is half a digit? I mean, a digit's obvious. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's half a digit? Half a digit is the leading digit. And basically, a half digit can be zero or one. So if you have a three and a half digit meter, that means its first or most significant digit can be as big as a one. And then the next three digits, of course, can be as big as a nine. That's the biggest number that this meter can show. Of course, the smallest is all zeros. So this becomes the possible range of values that you get on this meter. All zeros to 1999. That's a total of 2,000 counts. So you will sometimes hear this referred to as a 2,000 count meter. Okay? 2,000 count or three and a half digits. Either way, same thing. You will sometimes hear of a three quarter digit. We'll say this is a three and three quarter digit. Well, a three quarter digit, there's no standard for it, but typically that would mean the first digit can be zero, one, two, or three, sometimes zero, one, two, three, four. So if it goes up to a four, zero, one, two, three, four, then the biggest number you can have would be a four and then all nines. So that would be a 5,000 count meter, okay? So a half digit is more common, but you might see you know, one of these three quarter digit kinds of things. All right. So when we talk about an accuracy spec that is so many counts, what we're referring to is the least significant digit. Right. This guy way down here. So plus or minus one count literally means this digit could flip back or forth. Right. By one. If it's a plus or minus three count, then that thing can go up three counts. Right. Three values. So if it's a five, if it shows up as a five, you could think of it as, you know, plus or minus three, meaning could be six, could be seven, could be eight, could go the other way. 
right? Could go down the three counts, you know, so you could be looking at a four, a three, a two, okay? All right, so one thing that we need to do is determine where in this window the decimal point is, right? Because these meters have typically some kind of range selector on it besides a function selector. So on this meter right here, we have a rotary knob. This is fairly typical. So you have large ranges for like DC volts, AC volts, resistance, and so forth. And then within that, we have positions, right? So you might have like this one, you might have, because that's a three and a half digit, so it's 2000 counts. You might have a 200 millivolt scale, and then a 2 volt scale, a 20 volt scale, a 200 volt scale, right? So you know we we don't we don't call it 199 millivolt scale, or you know 199 volt scale. We just say okay, it's 2,000 counts. So even though it can't do exactly two volts, it's going to be pretty darn close to it. So we just call that a two volt scale. So what this means is, the 2 volt scale, for example, is we have this 1999, and we're going to put the decimal point right there. Okay, so we have 1.999 volts as the maximum value that the meter can show. If you put a voltage in that's larger than that, you put in 5 volts, the display will maybe flash, it might say error, it might say overload, something like that to indicate the value is too big. Right? It simply cannot measure a voltage that big on that scale. You would have to upscale. If you were measuring 5 volts, you'd have to flip over to the 20 volt scale. Right? 20 volt scale, we would move the decimal point on that 1999 right here. So we could read up to 19.99 volts. Right? So yeah, we can do 5. Right? We can do 5 volts. On the 200, same deal. We take the 1999 and we would put the decimal point right there, right, 199.9 volts. And lastly, you know, what do you think we're going to get for the 200 millivolt scale? Here's our 199 again. Well, the decimal point you can either think of as being here, but typically because it's in millivolts, it will literally show up right here. But we have to just remember it's in millivolts, right? So we can go up to 199.9 millivolts. Well, the question is, you know, um, why do we even have these different scales? You know, you can imagine a voltage being too big, obviously. Um, but why bother? Why not just always be on the 200 volt scale? Right? You'd never have to worry about overloading it. Well, the problem is right here. It's the resolution. This thing can only resolve to tenths of a volt, whereas this one can resolve to hundredths of a volt, and this thing can resolve to a thousandth of a volt, in other words, a millivolt. And finally, this thing can go to 100 microvolts, a tenth of a millivolt. So you always want to use the scale that is sort of the smallest scale that you can get that will still hold the value. Right? So the example of that 5 volt measurement, you can't use the 200, you can't use the 2. You could use the, the 20 or the 200, but you'd rather use the 20 because then you'll be able to resolve down here to hundredths. Whereas if you had it on the 200 volt scale, you'd only be able to uh, resolve this down to tenths of a volt. So you're going to get the most accuracy if you're measuring 5 volts. You're going to get the most accuracy over here on the 20 volt scale, right? 202, these two scales, they're going to overload. You're going to get an error. It's not going to measure, right? These two will both measure, but this one has higher resolution. So that's where you want to go. Some meters are auto-ranging. They'll automatically figure out which scale is best and jump to there, okay? There are some special cases where that's not good. So if you do pick up uh, an auto-ranging meter, it's always good to make sure that it has sort of an override where you can force a certain scale, okay? All right, so let's get back to our, our accuracy thing here, right? So let's say that we're gonna measure a, uh, a, uh, a voltage and it happens to be maybe 1.02 volts. So the first question is, what scale do you put this thing on? Well, you put it on the 2 volt scale, right? This is the lowest scale that can still contain the number. It will read on 200, it will read on 20, 
but on the two volt scale, you'll get resolution all the way down here to millivolts. These, you won't get as high a resolution, right? Basically, you're gonna, go, you're gonna throw away leading digits here. You know, if you put 1.02 volts on here, you can't even resolve the, the, the 0, 02 part, right? You can only go down to tenths. So you're actually throwing away these first two digits, right? That, that's a waste. Why do that, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna use the two volt scale. Now, what's the accuracy, right? So if the, if the accuracy on this thing, just, just to throw one out here, right? Let's just say it's you know, plus or minus 1%, uh, plus or minus uh, two counts. All right, so your meter actually reads, if it was perfect, right? Let's just say it reads, you know, the exact potential, which is 1.02 volts, okay? Um, but let's say, you know, you're, you're reading this, you don't really know that it's exactly 1.02 volts, but that's what the meter says it is. The meter says, when you stick the leads on there, it says 1.02 volts. So there's a little bit of a question about what the true value is because of the accuracy of the meter, right? Like I said, this is true of all kinds of measurement devices. It's true of the, you know, the speedometer in your car. If it says that you're going, you know, 62 miles an hour, are you really going exactly 62? Are you going 62 and a half? Are you going 61 and three quarters? Right? You don't know. I mean, just something simple like tire wear can affect the accuracy of, of your speedometer. Right? So all meters have this sort of built-in limitation. So we want to see, all right, it measures 1.02 volts. What's this little arrow window that I have? So the first part of it is the 1%, right? What's 1% of 1.02 volts, right? So, you know, 1% is pretty easy. Move the decimal over two places, right? So from 1.02, you get, um, if you move it over one spot, right, it's 102. You move it over another, it's 10.2 uh, millivolts. So that part works out to 10.2 millivolts. So you have this little arrow window of roughly 10 millivolts. Now, you also have this plus or minus two counts. So if I'm on this uh, scale, this, this two volt scale, right? It's not enough just to say, oh, well, I'm reading 1.02 plus or minus 10 millivolts. You know, if I just said that plus or minus 10 millivolts roughly, I'll just ignore the 0.2 millivolts because it's beyond our resolution. Um, so if I just said it's plus or minus 10 millivolts, then what we're really saying is, well, you know, that's the, that's the tens of millivolts digit. So we're saying that, well, it could be as big as 1.03. It could be as small, right? It's taking it away as 1.01. .01. That's the range if we were just looking at the percentage. All right, now, that would show up on this particular meter, you have three digits after the decimal point. So, you know, you're often told that, you know, trailing zeros are not significant. In the case of a meter, you want to record these things. In other words, if the meter actually says um, 1.025, don't ignore that five when you write down your values in a lab. Right? That becomes significant in that particular way. Um, it indicates you know, what the meter is showing you. Now, what's important here is the second part of this. this is this plus or minus two counts business. Okay, Like I said, I could ignore, in this case, the 0.2 millivolts because it's beyond the resolution of this meter. Right? This meter on this scale can only go down to a single millivolt, 0 0.001 volts. Alrighty, but we could get this final digit as in the case of this five. So when we throw on the plus or minus two counts, we're saying that, yeah, this digit can be also off by up to two digits, two counts. In other words, think of that as a seven or a three either way. Okay, could be up, could be down, you don't know. So there is, in fact, a little bit of a window on here. If you think of this as 1.02, right, plus or minus the 10, then you think of this as 1.010, 0 
for the small end, you would subtract the two counts. So that would turn out to be 1.008. And on the upper end, you would take the 1.03 and you would, right, that's actually 1.030. And then you could tack on to that the plus two counts to get the biggest possible value. One point zero three two. So you read on the meter one point zero two volts, one point zero two zero. Let's be nice about it, right? I'll be very accurate because this does have the digits, right? So that's what I'm going. I'm saying I'm going to read one point zero two zero volts. What we're really saying is because of the less than perfect nature of the meter, the actual value, the true value is somewhere between 1.008 and 1.032. Okay? That's our window of uncertainty. So I'm not going to say that the value is truly 1.020 because I know the meter isn't perfect, right? It is not perfect. No measurement device is perfect. It's flawless. They all have these sorts of limitations. In most cases, it is the percentage that's going to be the determining factor. That's going to be the, the biggie, and the counts are sort of secondary. It's, it is important to have that there, but usually it's the percentile. That's not always the case, particularly on, on something like maybe uh, an AC voltage or current. The count values can be pretty high. You can have meters that have a count value of plus or minus 10 or 15 counts. All right, and that can really kind of push you outside that envelope if you ignore the counts and you just look at the percentage part of it. All right, so be wary. Now, if you have deep pockets, you might find that you can get a, say, instead of three and a half, you can get a four and a half digit meter. So what's the deal with a four and a half digit meter? Well, we'd actually add another digit to each one of these things. So a 200 millivolt, Scale would be 199.99. Tell you what, so there's no confusion. I'll put this in another color. All right, same thing over here. Instead of just 1.999, it'd be 1.9999 9 volts. We're getting a whole order of magnitude improvement here. Okay, same thing on the 20, same thing on the 200. Okay, so you have, like in this case, you know, uh, resolution down to 10 microvolts. In this case, the red version here, we have resolution down to tenths of a millivolt. So, you know, I threw this away, this 0.2 millivolts. I threw that away because it was beyond the resolution of my meter, because uh, it was only three and a half digits. With my new meter, my four and a half digit meter, I wouldn't throw that away because that's within the realm of measurement. All right. Guess what? Big surprise, a four and a half digit meter or a four and uh, you know, three quarter digit meter is going to be considerably more expensive than your standard stock run of the mill three and a half digit meter. You can get a, a decent three and a half digit meter for, you know, 50 bucks US. OK, and they go up from there. You know, you could spend 100, 200 dollars. But, uh, you know, we're looking at multiples of that for a high quality, say, four and a half digit meter. Besides that extra digit, you'll also note that the percentages percent of accuracy will go up as well. So a typical four and a half digit meter, instead of maybe being 1% accurate on DC volts, might be more like 0.1% or 0.08% accurate. In other words, percentage of reading and then plus or minus the counts. Okay. All right. So that's the basic drill on these things. To recap, you take your meter, you always set it to the lowest scale that will contain the number. Right? You don't want to overload, but you don't want to underload the meter either. Right? I don't want to measure, for example, my 1.02 volts on a 200 volt scale. Right? If I had a three and a half digit meter, I'd only be able to resolve that to tenths of volts. Right? So I'm much better off on a two volt scale. Now I can resolve that thing down to millivolts. Right? Item number one. Then when we figure out the accuracy, and I always think of accuracy as this sort of window of uncertainty. You measure a value, it's telling you something, but it's never perfect. So what's my sort of error window? We do that in two parts. We get the percentage of the reading 
and then we look at what the counts are. The count is always the lowest resolution digit. Okay, that, that uh, smallest digit is probably a better word to say, right? That's as fine a value as you can get. So we add or subtract, depending on whether we're looking for max or min, um, that value to our uh, percentage that we've computed, and that will give us the total window uh, for the, the error envelope, all right? Okay, so wonderful. What else do I look for in a meter, right? Besides just the accuracy, the resolution. And I'm, I'm using those two words together to be very precise, right? What I'm really talking about here is accuracy with this, 1%. The resolution is how fine you can get. So clearly a four and a half digit meter has greater resolution by a factor of 10 compared to a three and a half digit meter, right? So the the resolution back here is a millivolt. The resolution here is 10 millivolts. The resolution here is a tenth of a volt for the black version, our three and a half digit version, all right? So the money you pay for the higher uh, resolution meter, the four and a half, right, gets you accuracy, gets you higher resolution. And usually those meters, like I said, will have maybe other, other factors on them, other kinds of measurements, uh, you know, transistor measurements, maybe it'll measure capacitance or frequency or other things like this. But, you know, they can get pretty pricey. It's, it's, not, it's not difficult to fork over $500 for a, a really high-quality DMM, all right? Portable DMM. Okay, so given that, is there anything else we have to worry about with our meter as far as uh, taking our measurements so we can record them, verify, you know, theory, and so forth? Well, there is. The active measurement itself can affect the measurement. Sounds a little strange. That's something called loading. We have to worry about meter loading. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. See you then.